God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name as our Father, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have not nurtured. We ask you this, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated. In our first reading, St Paul reflects on his work as an apostle, the leader with the successors to follow in bishops and priests. should be found worthy of his trust. Not that it makes the slightest difference to me whether you, or indeed any human tribunal, find me worthy or not. I will not even pass judgment on myself. True, my conscience does not reproach me, but that does not prove that I am acquitted. The Lord alone is my judge. There must be no passing of premature judgment. Leave that until the Lord comes. He will light up all that is hidden in the dark and reveal the secret intentions of men's heart. Then will be the time for each one to have whatever praise he deserves from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. If you trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in the Lord, he will grant your heart's desire. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit your life to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act so that your justice breaks forth like the noon day sun. The, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you shall have a home forever. For the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his friends. The, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Their stronghold in times of distress, the Lord helps them and delivers them and saves them from their refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have light of the life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to God. The feasts of the Old Testament give way to the feasts of the New Testament. They were preparation for things like Good Friday, Easter Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. And similarly, the fasts of the Old Testament give way to the reasons for fasting in the New Testament. The Pharisees and the scribes said to Jesus, John, that's John the Baptist, his disciples are always fasting and saying prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees too. But yours, Jesus, go on eating and drinking. Jesus replied, Surely you cannot make the bridegroom's attendants Fast while the bridegroom is still with them. But the time will come, the time for the bridegroom to be taken away from them. That will be the time when they fast. He also told them this parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to put it on an old cloak. If he does, not only will he have torn the new one, 
but the peace taken from the new will not match the old. And similarly, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins and then run out, and the skins will be lost too. No new wine, fresh skins. The Gospel of the Lord. May I offer as a bachelor, but a priest, a few thoughts on fatherhood. I've attended a school, a primary school, where 450 students each made a card for Father's Day. And a representative or two from each class read out the cards they'd made. Every one of them said, I love you, Dad. They also said extraordinary things like, often, you're the best dad in the whole world. But they all said, I love you, Dad. Now, I've met dads of teenage students who've said to me, I don't want them to be gushing over me, but I wish they'd talk to me like we were friends. So often they seem just to write me off. You know, it was the famous American author, Mark Twain, who wrote something like, when he was 15 years old, he knew that his dad knew nothing. And when he was 20, he was surprised at how much he dad, his dad had learned in five years. So similarly, my prayer and my advice is for students to speak to their dad with affection, with respect, with kindness. They need it as much as we all do. The other thoughts I had, just lately I visited a family who wanted to have a baby christened. And uh, they were a couple approaching 30 years of age. The baby was a year or more old. And I gradually picked up that they were not married. And when I spoke to the young lady, she said, I'd love to be married. I'm very committed to the baby and to the baby's father. I would love to be married. You better talk to him. And when I talked to him, he was sort of mute. He wouldn't respond much. I gradually realised that he just didn't want responsibility. He just wanted to be seen as a strong man, hard working, a good catch. But he wasn't willing to commit to loving the mother of his child as well as the child. And I think it can all start in high school when the young men, the young male students, think it's more important to be thought of as manly than as studious. They leave the study to the, to the young ladies. That has worried me for some years. Um, and it was different years ago. The dads were just as interested and competitive in their studies as were the, the young ladies. And of course it can flow over then that lack of responsibility or effort into the sort of behaviour that the father of the child showed. So I'm praying that the young men of our community, the sons of our fathers here, will be manly but will also make the best use and effort of the education they're provided with so that they'll be the best all-rounded person ready to assume responsibility in the world and make their contribution intellectually as well as in other ways. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand now for the prayer of the faithful. Dear brothers and sisters, 
gathered as one to celebrate the good things we've received from our God, let's ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop and all the clergy, with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered in this sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our fathers in our Good Samaritan community, that they may follow the example of the patron saint of fathers, Saint Joseph, foster father of Jesus, husband of our, la our lady and patron of the universal church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. A special prayer, dear Lord, in this particular time for those who are seriously ill because of the pandemic. pandemic. We long for their healing and well-being. We pray for those doctors and nurses who care for them, for their safety and effectiveness. We pray for governments who have to make decisions about our safety. And we pray that we'll all respond generously and prayerfully to this crisis in the world. Lord, hear us. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you. With humble and contrite hearts, Lord, wash your own mind. Please cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, so that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, with love we remember and represent his saving death. With faith, we celebrate his resurrection from the dead. With unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. Through Christ, we join with one another, with all the saints of earth and heaven, and with the angels, we proclaim your glory 
as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ our Lord, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop of Rome, and Anthony, our bishop, all the clergy, and all who serve the gospel, the good news. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, and Joseph and Jesus' foster father, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We say that prayer greeting for those near us, peace be with you, the greeting our Lord loved, peace be with you. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. to communion. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. <coughs> the body of Christ. 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 There are two there. Take them both. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. 
renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in each other and in our neighbour, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May God bless you, Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thank you. to our media crew as well.